the news. Good evening. The biggest case of child sex abuse in Seychelles legal history has ended with the sentencing of three men at the Supreme Court. The defendants, uh, who included a police officer, admitted 26 charges of abusing 75 children over five years. But the court believes there could uh, be up to 200 young victims in all with other perpetrators traitors still at large. Lifting a reporting ban on the case, the Chief Justice said it was a depressing reminder of the dangers children faced online. They were groomed on Facebook. 75 young girls aged 12 to 18 lured into a trap. They were blackmailed with intimate photos, threatened with public shaming, then raped. At court number four today, the scale and depravity of the crimes became clear. The Chief Justice, sitting with Judge Burhan, said the ringleader was both systematic and well organized. He would falsely represent himself as a female model and get in touch with young girls as young as 10 years of age and as many as 75 individuals. The ringleader, referred to in court simply as ML, was arrested at the MCB Bank in Victoria in a sting operation after one of the five witnesses reported him to police. The police seized a number of videos of the first convict engaging in sex with the young girls dating from 2012 to 2019 and also of the other two convicts in two separate instances having group sex with the first convict. Watching by video link, the three accused, dressed in t-shirt and shorts, their hands clasped in front of them, stood impassively, shoulder to shoulder, as their sentences were read out. The first accused, a 30-year-old fisheries officer, admitted 21 counts and was sentenced to 25 years in jail. The court ordered that he be placed on the sexual offences register and banned from any future social media engagement. The second accused, a 33-year-old police officer, admitted one count and was sentenced to 12 years in jail. The court noted noted that his sentence reflected how he had breached the trust placed in him as a law enforcer. And then the third accused, a 26-year-old draftsman and building contractor, admitted one count and he was sentenced to eight years in jail. The court noted in his case that he'd been only 18 years old at the time of the offence and had been a first offender. As the men were led away, one of them could be heard swearing. It, is, it was very grave. The sentence reflects of, of the Chief Justice in Lund, the Judge Buran, um, uh, reflects the seriousness of, of the offence committed. Given the circumstances of this case involving minor children, there were multiple counts. Uh, I don't personally believe it was harsh and excessive, yes. But again, I would have to see instruction from my client whether he wishes to appeal or not. Afterwards, the Chief Justice said 75 victims had been identified, but there could be up to 200 in all, and feared parents were not protecting their children from online predators. They really have to be a little bit more aware of what goes on on social media platforms. I am just shocked, I think, at the extent of the abuse in this case. I found it extremely harrowing and traumatic. The case, which began last July, was subject to a gagging order until now, while the names of those convicted will remain a secret in order to protect the identities of the victims. The head of social services said dozens of the convicted men's victims are receiving counselling for the trauma they suffered. Barry Laboudalon believes that other undiscovered victims may now feel emboldened to come forward and seek support. She told SBC News that several are now adults and all had to relieve memories of the abuse they suffered as part of the case. I can say they were a bit anxious. They were more, there was this element of fear, um, fear that the perpetrator, the abuser, might know that they are divulging or telling us about uh, what has happened to them. And uh, they were, some of them were like uh, depressed, some of them that, who were tearful. Um, some took time to open up to talk about what has happened. And for identifying, uh, for them to be able to identify themselves um, in videos and in pictures we have, uh, we had to show them the pictures and video. Some of them refused, but there were no other means of for, th for them to like uh, ascertain that, yeah, this is me. I was involved in this and this and that. 
The police say that they are not accepting fully the recommendations made by the Commission of Inquiry into the incident involving the position with Orum Kalawan. In the incident, his luggage was searched by officers of the ANB of the police force on the 8th of January, February sorry, upon his arrival at the Seychelles International Airport from an official mission. Frank Elizabeth, the lawyer representing the police force, said in a press conference today that the decision of Judge Fiona Robinson, who was heading the commission, sends the wrong message when she declared that the search of Mr. M. Callowan's luggage was unlawful because the ANB officer did not satisfy the test of reasonable grounds for suspicion before the search. This even if Mr. M. Callowan had instigated himself that the search be done. Mr. Elizabeth said that the police is taking the matter to court for a judicial review. Overall, we agree for the most part with uh, the investigation and the recommendations. However, there is one recommendation which we totally disagree with the judge and uh, after consultation with the Commissioner of Police and uh, other interested parties, we have decided that it is in the best interest of the, uh, of the country, in the best interest of the law, that we take this matter to court. Because uh, it is not clear from what uh, Judge Robinson has stated um, whether the police um, still has a right or the power to search on a person when the person gives his consent um, for the search to be carried out. Because according to her, in the circumstances uh, under which Mr. Romkalawan was searched, even though he did consent to the search, um, uh, Judge Robinson said the search was still unlawful. So we want to take this matter to the Supreme Court for judicial review. And uh, we will argue Article 20 of the Constitution when we go to the Supreme Court. And depending on the outcome of the case before the court, we will uh, then decide whether or not to comply with the recommendation of Judge Robinson. It uh, gives a wrong impression, uh, in, my, in my opinion, um, to the public, because uh, as you can imagine, there are a lot of people out there thinking now, because of this recommendation, that the police or the NB officers will no longer be able to search on people, either at the airport, on the, at the point of entry, or, or on the public road. Um, let, me, let me hasten to add that this is not a court case. It is not a precedent. It is a commission of inquiry. In my view, it would have no impact whatsoever legally because it is not a court case. The governor of the central bank, Carolina Bell, says that the central bank is still on the right track in attaining its objective to ensure that the International Foreign Exchange Reserve, that currently stands at $588 million, can support the country for the next 18 months and beyond if possible. Governor Abel uh, says the central bank has been able to save $1 million from the 10 it had planned to inject into the market. The commercial banks have received some foreign exchange inflows from their clients, and the government has also received a line of credit uh, of $6.9 million from the World Bank, which has improved its reserves. She says, however, CPEC is seeking some three Point seven million dollars to buy fuel, whilst STC is asking one point three million per month and four point three million dollars to create a six month food stock. She says, however, discussions are ongoing with the two entities. We did the auction for the ten million that the bank had approved and uh, we managed to sell nine out of the 10 million, which for us is a good thing in light that we could save 1 million that return um, to uh, the reserve so that we can continuously assist the market as we go along. And secondly, we have also seen an important change in the exchange rate. And uh, we are cognizant of the impact that this will have uh, on inflation and we continue uh, to monitor that, and we are conscious of the consequences on imported goods uh, coming uh, in the future. But 
the message that uh, Central Bank wants to continuously emphasize is for the whole economy to relook at its consumption. Uh, let's try to minimize that in the coming months so that we can stretch um, the extent that we can use the reserves such that at the point that the economy restarts again. The CEO of CPEC has said that in spite of a reduction in the production of crude oil internationally, the major factor affecting Seychelles is the increase in the rate of foreign exchange. He was speaking after President Danny Faure had met with senior management of the company. Mr. Conrad Benoito said that this uh, result would result in an increase of about three rupees in the price of fuel at petrol stations in the coming one or two months. It will definitely affect Seychelles because th this is a market-driven platform which is obviously initiated on a daily basis where we negotiate with our suppliers and we are already seeing an indication that the forward purchase is going to go up over and above what we're currently purchasing. We currently having around a 40% reduction in our pricing uh, angle in terms of our imports, but that will obviously be eroded the moment the market traders will say to our suppliers, you want my cargoes, you will have to pay me more now. And uh, when will the local consumers uh, um, expect the rise to happen? The current pricing that we currently have in terms of the benefits of the downturn will probably last between two to three weeks from today. After that, pricing may go up and subjected to the new FX rates that are currently in force in Seychelles because we were buying these rates at 14.25 rupees to a dollar, now it's at 17 rupees 50 and keep rising. So when we start taking our next cargoes in three weeks time, four weeks time, it will obviously impact on the end cost to rupee value to the consumers in the country. And uh, President Falso visited three other companies. This was uh, the SPTC, the STC, and uh, the PUC. And uh, at PUC, its uh, CEO, Philippe Moret, said that two major projects are on hold due to the COVID-19 situation and directives from the health authorities for people to stay at home. Cost escalations, for example, arising from the fact that uh, we've had to, in to, to ask contractors on those major projects like Lagok Dam, raising Lagok Dam, 33 KV to South Mahé and others, we've had to ask the contractors to stop work. And obviously, they will continue to incur costs even if they stop work on those projects because they have manpower which are sitting, not doing anything. They have other costs that they have to incur. So those contractors, they've invoked the force majeure clause in the contracts that we have with them. And obviously, after everything is over uh, and we are back to normal, they will submit claims to PUC uh, based on the fact that uh, they've incurred those costs and someone has to meet it, and it will obviously be the client, PUC. These are obviously points of concern for us, and uh, we've also gone a bit further in, the, in what's, what's going to happen in the future, basically, what sort of uh, escalations in fuel prices that we anticipate and what impact this will have uh, on PUC and the tariff generally. And finally, as from 7 p.m. this evening, about uh, 14 minutes ago, only people working in places considered the critical will be able to circulate on the road. This measure falls within the framework of strengthening the restrictions already in place in the fight against the COVID-19. Grocery shops selling food, uh, as from today, closed at 6 p.m. and will open tomorrow at uh, 6 a.m. And with this, we end this news uh, summary. Thank you for watching.